fucking. CGI and special effects are all very well, but for my money, the most significant technological advances have taken place away from the screen in the world of editing. Video editing used to be a fairly cumbersome process, more difficult than film, which you could easily slice up with razor blades. Consequently, in ye olden days, there was often more vision mixing than editing. Indoor scenes would be shot in a studio using several cameras, and the director would cut between them, creating an edit on the fly. Exterior scenes used to be shot on 16mm film because it was easier to edit. That's why a lot of old shows, especially comedies, had such a different feel whenever they cut to an outdoor location. That's an effect that will be familiar to anyone who remembers the peerless Faulty Towers. True to subversive form, Monty Python even used it as the basis for a very clever sketch. Gentlemen, I have bad news. This room is surrounded by film. What? 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 Things changed in the early 90s when hard disk editing arrived to excite this edition of Tomorrow's World. I can see all the shots here on this screen and they're instantly accessible. And over here on this one, this is where you build up your edited report. You can swap shots over or change them for other ones really easily. This was a bit like the leap from typewriters to word processors. Suddenly it was a piece of piss to chuck in one edit after another. The logical conclusion is the hyper-edited bombardment you get in frenetic MTV dating shows like this. It's also enabled reality shows to exist because now it's possible to go through 24 hours of footage and condense it down to one hour of highlights in time for transmission the next day. Of course, the pressure of time and the need to tell a story means you often end up with a crude caricature of real life, a condensed bullet point version of events that can be easily manipulated to tell almost any story you like. To demonstrate this, we decided to make our own reality show in miniature. Day one in the Screenway house. The first flatmate to arrive is children's entertainer Jim Bob. Next in is runner from previous screen wipe series, Louise. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Jim Bob. Jim Bob and Louise. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Misanthropic TV presenter Charlie is the third flatmate to enter the screen wipe house. It's a bit awkward, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Should we have a drink? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Last to arrive, glamour model Agony Ant and DJ Ashleen. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello, I'm Ron. Nice I'm Charlie. Hello. What we've ended up with is hours of fairly nondescript footage of us all standing around and jabbering. It's shot from three angles, here, here and here. And we've also got interviews in which each of the flatmates say what they thought of each other. Using these ingredients, we can tinker to an absurd degree. If we want, we can hunt through it for moments where it looks like Ashling's flirting with me, as well she might. Here's one. Here's another one. Oh, and here's another. Oh, she bloody wants me. Or we could just cherry-pick the moments where it looks like she's not that impressed at all. That's just highlighting a particular aspect. If we want, we can be more devious than that. For instance, here, I get away with telling a pretty lame joke. What, what's red and invisible? <laughs> I don't know. No tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> but if we want, we can join the start of that moment to another moment that actually happened later on, and suddenly I seem to die on my arse. What's red and invisible? <laughs> I don't know. No tomatoes. We can also use one piece of footage to illustrate two completely different points. For instance, here's a shot of me talking and them listening. It doesn't tell you much, but if we run it in conjunction with a positive-sounding soundbite, suddenly it takes on a different meaning. 
He's quite attractive in a kind of weird, quirky way. He's very engaging. You know, he captures your attention quite like that. And if we change that sound bite, well, suddenly the meaning changes with it. Oh, where to start? It just goes on and on and on and on, and he just takes everything out of context and onto a whole different tangent. And it's just like yabba yabba yabba. We can use these techniques to tell almost any story we want. We can make it look as though Ashleen's bored of me, or we can take two shots that happen some time apart and combine them to make me look like a lecherous scumbag. Of course, that's all artifice. In reality, Ashleen and I have been married for two years and are very, very much in love. Ever and ever, forever and ever, you'll be the one that shines on me like the morning sun. All right, that's a lie as well. We had to pay her just to turn up. And even then, we had to prop a picture of Richard Madeley up in her eye line so she could pretend it was him she was hugging and not me. I don't know what it is that pussy loves that madely. <laughs> I can't say that. Go to the store, pick up a couple of things, and I have to do it before I sleep.
Oh fuck, I think I need to go to the store and do that. And play more games tomorrow. I'm making a lot of really dumb mistakes. That last game I fucked up the first mothership really bad and I almost lost. It's really dumb. This disconnect is really fucking gay too. Oh wow, it was him playing Zerg. Fuck, fuck me, dude. When is tomorrow? I don't know, whenever the fuck I wake up. I love you guys, I'm going to sleep, it's been fun. Keep it real. If you can even say this, I don't know how many can watch, apparently it's fucking up right now, sorry. Peace out.